inject uh, this specificity sensitivity uh, true positive false positive area under the curve okay in between we'll discuss it okay <coughs> that codes you have done codes Uh, random forest and decision tree, and one person only sent me this uh, file with the customers <coughs> who will be predicted value, who will be zero or one, one sheet, extra sheet. That is just one line code. Write dot csv. So nobody else has sent. So try to send it by tomorrow or tomorrow. okay. Uh, that is one thing, and. Uh, Okay. Uh -huh. Price is drastically changed. What is drastically changed? Common distribution. In price. In price. Hmm. I given this one also in my recent trip. Ah, hmm. uh, uh, that one price. Hmm. This one also is uh, out there. So you need to replace with me in that. Replace and see if you are getting better accuracy. Actually, it should. either it will give you accuracy good accuracy or lesser accuracy so basically it can happen because of outliers your model is right now whatever accuracy is giving might be not robust it is not the actual accuracy what should be given so if you will do the cleaning you will remove outliers your accuracy should change can can i do that all those reading problems or no no uh, see Account balance column you cannot remove because it's an important column. Okay, for deciding out like loan and all those eligibility, but you have to go and check uh, the correlation with why. Check the correlation if they are dependent. If the, it is, if your price is affecting the uh, output or not. If it is affecting, then you cannot remove. If it is not affecting, then you can remove. But in this case, you cannot remove. But you can do the cleaning over that because that's an important feature. Correct. Okay. So, in between, we will discuss all these things also. So now, this is a new machine learning algorithm clustering techniques. Okay. So we'll see what all happens in clustering technique. Now, this is bit different from other techniques whatever we have studied uh, last week. Okay. So, okay. So. these are the libraries which you have to install we will discuss it later so okay these are the some idioms i have written so leave this also so let's discuss before going into clustering some concepts we will discuss okay so how do we simplify the data okay suppose somebody has given to you uh, uh, a data set with 10000 columns and 1 million rows okay so what will be your first steps for reducing the size of the data what cleaning procedures we will do on this particular data so you can reduce the size of the data because right now i have 10000 columns not all will be required probably it may be required also okay another thing is not all rows are required okay so what you will do to reduce the size now it is an interview question suppose i have given you a data set with 1 million rows and 10000 columns okay so what you will do the what you will do to reduce the size of the data deleting the columns whichever is unnecessary so you will go into excel sheet and manually delete the columns wrong what else you know how you will delete what you will do the different columns hmm how you will identify this is the Uh, no before running algorithm see if you have ran the algorithm then your cleaning doesn't make sense correct you have taken whole whole data but my question here is uh, an interviewer is asking you you have this size of data set but i don't have the capability to handle this size of data you are giving me 1 tb data with 10000 column but my machine can handle up to 500 gb or 600 gb okay i want to reduce the data size so what all techniques you know and what all things you will take care into account for reducing this data size so one she told random forest means important variable you are discussing that i can identify which are important variables which are affecting my model but there you have built the model i don't want to build the model before building the model itself i want to do this so first is she told 
uh, I'll go into the data set. What she's trying to say is, with the domain expertise, I'll first try to identify which all are the columns important, which are not important. Okay. Now, apart from this, what else you know for reducing the data size? I can randomly take samples of the data. That is sampling. Missing values mentioned. Okay. Correct. That is what row reduction. So I will check for the missing values, and I can drop those rows. Correlation check. Correlation check. Correct. Correlation Wait. check. How it will help you? You can identify which columns are twins. You can remove either of the columns. It will reduce the size. What else you know? Drawing a box plot. Okay. Correct. I'll try to draw the box plot, or I'll use describe function for finding out the five number summary, and I'll remove the data which is coming outside 68 percent of the range. Or robust method is use 95 percent. So whichever is coming after 95 percent of the range, remove those data sets. So your outlier removal will happen in a way. Outlier removal will also do the reductions into the size of your data set. Correct. One is correlation. What else you know? Check for duplicates. Check for duplicates. Correct. Yes, that is. Can I perform Gini again? No, that is again you went into model building. So wrong. Variance checking. Variance check. I can check the zero variance. Which all columns are having zero variance? I'll remove them. Okay. So these are all the methods. Okay. So reducing the data size. So simplified data equals to eliminating data complexity. Too many variables to a few variables. So lot of columns you have, you are reducing it to few variables. Correct. Another is too many records to few records. Too many records means observations, number of observations. Now dimension reduction. So what is dimension reduction? Dimension reduction is nothing but your variable reduction, column reduction technique is also called as dimension reduction. So what all what all dimension reduction techniques are available? Collinearity check, correlation check. Business rule based domain knowledge. One more is principal component analysis (PCA). This is in your syllabus, which we will be studying next to next week. Okay. So PCA is again one more technique available into the market, which can help you to reduce the dimension of the data. Okay. How? So it's actually it is not a machine learning algorithm. It is just a technique for dimensionality reduction. So we will see how it helps into dimensionality reduction. But it is recommended. So. The one thing is, if we have dimension reduction technique available, which can automatically reduce the dimensions, then why to do this correlation check and all these things? The reason is again, PCA is a black box. You don't know which all dimension it is removing, which all dimension it has clubbed together. So all these things are the problem in PCA. So it is recommended until unless you are not having a very large dimensions available, don't go with PCA. Now, ten thousand dimensions is a problem because manually going into ten thousand dimensions and checking with As per the domain and business rule base, is a bit difficult. Okay, so at that point of time, it is recommended. Okay, because anyway, it is a black box right now for you. There are ten thousand who will check for next four five months. You have to deliver the project in one month. Then they are recommending. Okay, let's go with the uh, PCA. But if you are having four hundred to five hundred variables, it is recommended to use uh, correlation checks, zero variance checks, and all these things. Okay, one more thing. Uh, this has been asked into an interview. One of the student told me, "What is the difference between machine learning and AI?" Machine learning works on fast data. AI also works on fast data. AI is the superset, can we say? Like machine learning is part of it, and deep learning is part of it. In machine learning, predictions happens. AI also kind of predictions happening. So I I tell you. Automation of machine learning. We can say when we train the model, and it uh, you are nearby. Yes. So I'll give you answer for that. What happens into machine learning? You are taking historical data. You are doing the analysis, and on the basis of analysis, you are generating one report, and you are sending to CXOs. Now CXOs are reading these reports, and they are taking the decisions. Okay. Like somebody, like in home uh, home loan or credit card. So what you are doing? Somebody is coming. You are taking its features, and your model is saying we should offer him the credit card or not. This decision will go to the bank. Now, some person into the bank, he will see these things, and he will approve the credit card or not manually for him. So, on the basis of your calculations and whatever suggestions you have given, CEO, CXOs will take the business decisions. You are helping them. You are a helping hand for them. In AI, what happens? This decision has been taken by bots. Bots means robots. 
some bots are running in behind the scenes internally into your server systems which are taking this decision so now i have done some analysis and i have sent this analysis to business now why you cannot take that decision because you don't know the business agree now health domain or credit card domain even though suppose somebody is having very less civil score suppose 200 300 we cannot give actually he is not eligible for for the loan but what happened just 6 months back he has changed the switch the job and now his salary is uh, 20 lakhs okay actually he is what will happen when somebody manually do this calculation so what he will do probably his uh, civil scores are not getting updated properly but what i am saying is salary is 20 lakhs per annum is getting one more than 1 lakh into his account let's give him the loan he is eligible so these kind of decision but actually your model is telling on to the basis of data bhai i am seeing civil score is very low we should not give this there is a risky here but still bank will give correct so what what happens this is where the differentiation comes because you don't understand the business civil and all that you understand but when you will go into the business actually where decision making happen probably stock markets you don't understand how brokers were how brokerage works so at that time what happens your analysis will help them to take the decision so the where these decisions are getting replaced by the cxos and ceos bots are taking the decision it will become artificial intelligence it still internally machine learning only is running all that analysis historical analysis is happening but the additional point what you have done whatever was their uh, method of taking the business decision that also you are mimicking now into your machine learning algorithm so over these predictions we will write one more algorithm which will mimic their human brain when they are taking the decision on the basis of functionality that will become your bot based so that is become that will become artificial intelligence but yes it is a subset machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence deep learning and all these things comes under that sure question is end of end result what you're saying is the front end what you're showing or end result what you're showing to the customer uh, uh, person is yeah and inside logic whatever is there is so you're saying that uh, no machine when you have to take decision via the ai still you need some algorithm internally Yes. Correct. So that will be machine learning algorithm, yeah, or deep learning algorithm, or your computer vision algorithm. Instead, whatever logic or some yeah. algorithm running will be machine learning. When there is an end-to-end -end system where no human intervention is involved, simply it's an AI. I'll tell you one example: face detection. So in face detection, nobody is taking decision. You are showing your face to the mobile. Mobile is opening up. It is an AI. Nobody is sitting somewhere and checking your face back, and then he is confirming something. that is an example of ai but that our bank credit card problem that's a problem of machine learning because here human intervention is there okay one more example i'll give you for ai for understanding this is one company american insurance group aig they have implemented it uh, one and a half year back so previously what was happening whenever some automobile damage some car accident happens so what happens they they, they have some uh, somebody you will claim you will raise the request for the claim somebody will come from insurance agency he will take the pictures and then he will pass it to the insurance agency then they will calculate the claim and amount will be disbursed somebody will disburse the amount this is what happening now what was happening here suppose your car got damaged so people what they were doing they were damaging it more so they can claim more amount okay and some uh, so in america they they are giving the claims for whole whole car actually they are giving a large amounts for the car claim so frauds were happening okay so you have one dent what you will do you will put five six dents into your car and when the person will come that time fraud will happen and they uh, insurance group will be uh, losing the money that was the system now what they have built up uh, so now here there is a combination of see there are multiple examples now you will see uh, iot is involved computer vision is involved machine learning is involved ai is in now whatever mechanism i'll be telling you that is in ai so i'll tell you now what happens now they have something they are they are having sensors into the car okay these sensors they are continuously capturing the data from these sensors okay whenever some accident happens so there is some proximity sensor which is uh, uh, defining the safe distance and whenever you will be hitting somebody that proximity sensor will send the signal that hit happened so now whenever this hit is happening from aig one drone is taken automatically okay now this drone will follow the gps coordinates of the car and they will uh, it will reach the car it will take the pictures 
automatically from all the four five ends within the same within half an hour or 15 minutes whatever is the distance of the car and after taking these pictures now this is an example of iot when drone is triggering from the with the help of sensors internet is running from the help of internet this is keep on monitoring multiple cars whenever signal is coming it is detecting and going to gps this is iot internet of things you are connecting multiple hardware over the internet for reaching to the destination now what happens it has taken the pictures so now pictures it has taken so what they have done they have historical data available of photos when damage happened so they have taken lot of photos aig is having millions of photos available from their manual work now they know whenever there is a hit on bonnet what amount they have processed when there is a dent what amount they have processed when there are four dents what amount they have processed now your model is trained okay so whenever you are dealing with video and images it is becoming computer driven okay can i use machine learning algorithms in computer driven yes so basically uh, damage or no damage it is which kind of problem Classification. Classification. classification the clustering we have not studied till now correct it is a classification problem you want to find out damage happened or not happened if it did not happen it will not process it is happening yes. so what happens internally images are there these images your model is reading output is there so this is damage image this is non damage image correct so classification model so your model will be getting trained on to that data okay now your drone will uh, send these photos to the model which is running into the server this is a trained model now this model will do the prediction like okay is it damaged or non damaged now if it is damaged then another algorithm is running which will decide how much amount i should process which algorithm i can use for find, finding out how much amount i should process on the basis of suppose in my car four dents are there bonnet is also crashed uh, wind is screen also gone so which algorithm you, do you think on the basis of these features can tell me the amount that this much amount i should process regression correct now these damage pictures will become the features for you one dent four dent bonnet crashed wind screen crashed correct on the basis of that previously you have data available how much amount they have dispersed on that your model has been trained regression line it will do the prediction some error will be there because of r square rss okay but it's still nearby amount you will be able to process correctly now it will process the amount and automatically it will be dispersed into the bank account of the particular person this whole setup is called as ai so ai itself is nothing it is a combination of multiple things okay so as such if somebody will ask you what is ai ai is actually this is so all these under computer vision deep learning natural language processing machine learning all this comes under an ai when you are designing a full flesh solution from end to end it is becoming an ai okay so that is what something now amazon is also able trying to achieve they are also drawing the coming up with the function where you are ordering something drones will trigger automatically they will fill up the things not amazon sorry alibaba chinese are more superior in ai as of now ai okay so alibaba most of the things are automated okay even their processing their store engineering everything so they don't have workers very few workers they are using other all other things are bots only which are working for them drone will deliver uh ha huh. so door to door delivery uh, drone delivery amazon is trying right now but store section management in alibaba it is happening from the uh, via the robots only bots machine learning based bots are doing they are de delivering they are automatically they are connected with the website whoever is ordering that particular order number they are as associating with the package dropping it for the production so from where they can transfer so these are the things are happening okay so now what is happening whenever uh, the decision making power is also uh, replaced by the machine learning that will become ai okay so no human intervention basically that will be ai artificial intelligence so that is the reason why mid the people who are working on to the middle management level they are in trouble not cxo level people because see still it is difficult to remove somebody who is having the experience of 20 30 years it's not that easy they know lot of things it is very hard to mimic their brains into the machine learning because machine learning still works on to the uh, based on evidences given into your uh, historical data but i i told you one example last time we found out one fraud but our client told no no he was my first client i am happy if he is uh, 
looting money from you. Agree? Sometimes it happens or not. Somebody who is doing a lot of things for us, but still we hate him or her. Correct? This happens. Still, somebody, we like somebody, but he or she hates us. If I went into college time. Okay. <laughs> okay. So these are the neural networks which we cannot mimic into the artificial neural networks. Okay. This is how our biological neural network works. And scientists are trying to mimic this DNA into ANA. So we have only achieved 5% till now. 95% is still our BNN is highly complex. We don't know how many features keep on running into behind the scenes. So whenever you are taking one decision, a lot of things are happening behind the scenes. Okay, a lot of features you are considering. Suppose you are buying a house. A lot of things are running area, money, how much I will be having, how I'll manage and emotional decisions. So multiple features are involved when you are taking decisions. So similarly, in ANN also a lot of things. ANN we have to study. So we'll see how ANN works. So these are the things. These are the some differences. So, okay. So principal component analysis, we are leaving now. We will read it when it will come in some later classes. Now, another method is clustering and segmentation. Case reduction reduce the number of records by identifying similar groups and representing them as clusters. So I'll tell you what is clustering. So clustering is a technique for finding similar groups in data called clusters. It groups data instances that are similar to each other in one cluster and data instances that are very different from each other into different cluster. A cluster is therefore a collection of objects which are similar between them and are dissimilar to the objects belonging to other clusters. So I'll tell you now what happens into clustering. So till now, whatever algorithms we have studied, these are supervised algorithms. Correct? What is supervised algorithm? You know the target. Is it zero or one? Win or no win? Loss or no loss? Default, no default. Okay. Disease, no disease. Cancer, no cancer. M, D. Now, clustering is unsupervised algorithm. In clustering, you don't have target variable available. You don't know zero, one, zero, one, or which particular case it's available. So, in unsupervised learning, what happens into the clustering? It is general saying if you are not able to understand any sort of data or something, you just run the clustering into this. So what clustering does? Clustering try to identify the pattern out of the data. Okay. So I'll tell you what it does basically. So uh, suppose you are having uh, 10,000 uh, observations available from a retail store. 10,000 customers data you have available. Okay. So now what clustering will do? Clustering will create, suppose you are creating three clusters. Clustering will create three clusters or segments. The property of those three clusters or segments will be the clusters will be heterogeneous to each other, but homogeneous within themselves. What is heterogeneous and homogeneous? Different. So one cluster, so three clusters you have created. All three clusters will be different to each other. Okay. But within themselves, they will be homogeneous. So I'll give you one example. What happens in a retail? So we will be seeing the retail example only. So what will happen in a mall, central mall, few people who are going, who are always going for buying apparels, they are apparel lovers. So in one cluster, it will collect these type of people who are always buying apparels. Okay. In another cluster, it will collect the people who are always going and buying the fruits and vegetables. Another cluster, it will collect the people who are buying always uh, some ration. Or probably another features, one cluster is having the people who are having the spending uh, nature of more than 10,000. One cluster is having the spending nature below 5,000. So within themselves, all these people will be having similar nature. Okay. Getting so clusters will be heterogeneous to each other, but homogeneous within themselves. We will see how it will create, how it is taking multiple features and it is creating. Okay. Right now you just think only one feature is there. He is an apparel lover, food and beverages and ration. So it will create, so suppose 1000 variable values are available. It will create 300 people in a one cluster with apparel. 300 people in one cluster with FNB and 400 left over will be your ration numbers. So now benefit of clustering is it can give you the, see here we don't have target variable available on the basis of features it will identify. How it will identify what it does, we will see now in the nurse. Okay, so benefit first I'll tell you application. What is the benefit of, if you are finding out the clusters of these apparel lovers and all these people? What is the benefit? What do you think? If, a, if to a mall or D-Mart or your more mega store, because these are the major people who are using this. If I tell them, 
that these kind of people are lying into this cluster and this cluster is incentivizing these type of people what benefit business benefit they will get what do you think yes basically yes so what happens uh, suppose i'll be giving now a diwali discount on apparels suppose 10000 rupees off okay now if i'll send this 10000 rupees off coupon to everybody what will happen i always buy uh, from dmart now what happens 10000 rupees discount came only one time i will go and i will buy from here because there is a discount next time onwards again i will not buy as a business i should take care of my loyal customers correct because suppose i am always buying from central mall so i am the loyal customer for them so they should give the discounts to the people who are actually generating the revenue for them correct so there it will optimize their budgets and they will not be having budget for all the people they can only offer to certain people so this is what adidas nike and these people are doing so if you will see them the people who are regularly buying from these stores they are sending them offers whenever they are launching a new shoe okay they they are not sending the offer to me because i am not buying but my brother he used to buy from adidas only whenever any new shoe they are launching they are sending an offer to my brother like okay these so they are finding out who are the people who are buying shoes from them who are buying sandals from them or some other sort of material they are buying so this is where clustering can help and clustering is mainly used into the retail industry okay to identify the pattern of the customer like how people are behaving and what is actually what type of people are coming into my store if i can find out 80 to 90% people who are coming to my store are only coming for buying fnb food and vegetables so let's change my business model let's not put apparels let's put fnb only because i might be making losses because now i am not able to sell them so i can suggest to this store like sir put these things into your store and it will help you to increase the revenue this is where analytics and business analytics helps the industries for generating revenues before analytics what was the problem you cannot identify what is what is happening why i am not able to generate more revenue what is the problem why why what is the reason that even though my store is very nice i am having lot of apparel people are not buying all these answers now your machine learning can give not actually machine learning your data scientists can give because in machine learning is still will just run and give you something you have to take the value out of it what you understood okay so more clarity will come so this is one graph okay <coughs> brand conscious customers and price conscious customers okay so this particular person or leave it this particular person he is very high on brand consciousness but low on price consciousness okay so what kind of customer he is he always buy from the brand branded stores he always go to nike and adidas and these kind of stores puma and he doesn't care about price okay whatever is the price he will always buy the branded shoes or branded uh, clothes okay now this customer high on price consciousness but low on brand consciousness so this is a customer who doesn't care about brand he just want to buy within 1000 rupees this is my data okay so these kind of customers exist now the problem i'll tell you see now again see the difference with the machine learning and uh, where it is helping previously what was happening i have given you this example previously also now what happens suppose i am a brand conscious customer okay and i am working for some company now i have to take decision where i can increase the revenue without using analytics or machine learning what will happen what i will think because i am a brand conscious customer everybody is brand conscious it happens or not correct we always see with our perspective correct correct or wrong okay we will also think yes if i am feeling this same thing he might be also feeling the similar thing this happens so similar way if a price conscious customer will be there he will never take the decision for premium class he will always think no no yaar 2000 plus i should not go into that price range let's degrade the quality of our shoes so that was the problem because i don't i cannot understand what is my customer base what are dislikes or likes of my customer base because you have 10 million customers how you will go to each and every customer and you will analyze people were doing previously this okay they were analyzing manually okay but now when techniques are available they are not doing that previously people were sitting and companies are paying to these people who were doing going and doing these kind of analysis for them so <clears throat> this is one graph 
So can you tell me which particular sections are having similar kind of people available? So I can say this one circle is one one cluster. I can say this is one another circle. I can say these few people are fifty fifty on price and brand. Okay, so the people who are uh, onto that this threshold na fifty fifty. These are actually the target people for us. This is what I understood from the experience. I am not telling from machine learning because these are the people whom you can convert. Okay, so these are the people who are always fluctuating. Should I go with brand or not? I have budget, but if I put five hundred more, I'll be able to buy Puma. These are the customer which you should target, which can help you to increase the revenue. I'll tell you why. So this is something business understanding. I am telling you because previously I was working into retail company. Okay, so. i know how they think so what happens these customers okay the customers who are very high on brand they will always buy branded shoes from nike whether you give them discount or not doesn't matter they are your loyal customers okay if you will release coupon for them they will be happy mm -hmm. if you will not release still they will come and buy from you only problem with the price conscious customers price conscious <coughs> customer will always go for the rate so therefore then if you want to target this section then you have to check the rates now this is another section which is 50 on price and 50 on brand these are the customers actually they can buy puma they can afford puma and nike but why they are not affording because they they are not having that 3000 budget their budget is 2500 give them coupon 500 rupees they will come and buy from you this is how they were taking this decision making because when i made the model for them clustering model i have given some other analysis okay i told do this do this then they came back and slapped me like no i will not give to the the coupon to the loyal customers because anyways they will not leave me they are anyways a stable source of income for me i want to increase the revenue so first so price conscious still we were not able to increase via that technique we tried but these 50% na who are on 50 50 the these people we were able to convert so right now from last 4 to 5 years the business models are they want to uh, increase the revenue and customer retention notice i am not saying profits i am saying revenue okay and customer retention profit doesn't matter okay so now customer retention is the uh, making a new customer is very difficult retaining a customer is something which is required so loyal customers are always retained these are fluctuating customers we can convert them as to a new customers and we can try to retain them whenever i have i'm launching any new shoes so into these customers i am sending a discount coupon so this is where so uh, this uh, i have done this project for coles so this coles is doing coles is selling nike puma these shoes so what coles has done coles told us don't send the offers to the loyal customers only send the offers to these customers so they were able to increase the revenue they were able to generate the sales for that particular month more than 25% increase into the sales so that is how analytics is helping and that is that 25% 25% increment is in million dollars okay that is why companies are pouring money into data science okay data is the new oil have you have read somewhere this slide yes sir upgrade upgrade okay <laughs> okay so yes so that is how that is why data is the new oil you are extracting information out of this data well you are generating money same thing happened with that cambridge analytica where they put clusters of people yes. according to their behavior left leaning or right see uh, i'll i'll tell you one thing in in today's time money is not the power if you have data that is the most powerful thing you know which all are the companies which are having highest net uh, net worth the companies which are having customer base amazon apple they are having a customer base now apple is not sharing their data to anybody they are having all customer data available simple example i'll give you suppose if i have suppose if i have sandhya's account number password i know where she is going okay what are her habits i can track all these things from the mobile google android is doing that by the way okay don't you think whatever i want i can make her to do you can okay so data is the power right now not money if you have data about everybody you can play as and how you want to play now what cambridge analytica did they have basically collected the data 
from Facebook. So I, I'll tell you what happened. So uh, uh, that they have used NLP techniques and machine learning techniques. They have find out the people who are supporting uh, Clinton and who are supporting your Trump, Donald Trump. Now what they have done, simple in our terms, I'm telling you, there are few people who are always uh, sharing and liking the BJP post, RSS post. There are few people who are sharing Congress posts and all that. So Facebook knows what are your likes and dislikes. Congress knows you are inclined towards which party. Suppose I'm inclined <coughs> towards BJP. Okay. Now Facebook knows this. Now, if Congress is paying to Facebook, sir, do something. Make some air for me. Now what they will start doing on your timelines, they will start publishing the uh, fake news. That today BJP uh, worker got arrested with 10 lakh rupees. Today BJP worker has done this, done that. Now what will happen? First 10 days you will ignore them. Then what will happen now if it will be happening continuously for 6 months? Then you will start thinking, yeah, seriously something happening or not. How come these many people can lie? A lot of news are coming for BJP. They are into corruption. They are involved into something. They will change your thought process. They will play with your mind. After certain time, you will start believing whatever Facebook is saying to you. That is what they did actually in US. And they were trying to do in uh, India. Congress was having tie up with Cambridge Analytica, but they banned Cambridge Analytica. Otherwise that was happening in India. If you remember five years back when this election started that time against BJP, there were, there were a lot of fake posts and fake news were coming. That was happening because of this, that industry. After that, this Narendra Modi has hired the team of data scientists. Okay, now he's working with a team of 500 data scientists. There's one person, Pradhan, Gaurav Pradhan or something. He's the chief data scientist of his team. He is now telling him what to tell. Even he is preparing the speech for him. So, whatever are the key. So, what he is doing, he is going on Twitter and other news channels. And what he is doing, he is extracting the keywords. And whenever Narendra Modi is going into any of the state, he is telling use these. Whatever speech you are making, use these keywords. So now, when he is coming to Tamil Nadu, he knows Kaveri is the issue. When he is going to Rajasthan, he knows water is the issue. Whenever he is going to some other place, he knows what is happening there. That is how. He is becoming more effective. If you will see his parliamentary speech in one of the speech, he said, now uh, I am implementing data mining techniques into the tax department where I will be able to identify who is doing the tax fraud. So this is the penetration of AI and machine learning as of now. It is still into the implementation phase, but going forward in next 10 years, you will see a totally different world, whatever you are seeing right now. Lot of things are happening. We don't know behind the scenes. Okay, so how they are identifying that you are doing tax fraud? They have machine learning algorithms running. Otherwise, for 125 million people, they cannot identify what is happening. Correct. So you have to use machine learning and technology. There is no way with C programming or Java to handle that. So this is where they help. I agree. You might be having only 80% accuracy, 20% misclassification, but still that 80% I will be able to track. Correct. This is how it works. So let's discuss more about this. So now this is the individuals and price consciousness and brand loyalty scores. So price <coughs> conscious score out of 10 and brand loyalty score out of 5. So what happens? Customer A is having a score 2 on price consciousness, a score 4 on brand loyalty. Okay. Now what happens? This is the chart. This is where it has put up according to the uh, scores, which customer is lying in which particular zone. Then what he's saying, these two customers are nearby. So these are two similar customers. These three customers are nearby to let them make it into one cluster. So now if you will see, you will notice down these three customers are highly price conscious. Agree. And these two customers are highly brand conscious, even though they are somewhat separated, but still they are similar. Okay. So what I'm saying, this is one cluster. This is another cluster. These clusters are heterogeneous to each other, but they are homogeneous within themselves. That is how we are finding out. Now, A and D form one segment of customers who are very high on brand loyalty. B, C and E is another segment which is very price conscious. So, this is one thing. Leave this. Formulate the clustering problem. So, how to formulate the clustering problem, understand the business problem, hypothesize, hypothesize the variables that will help solving the clustering. Applications are store clustering, customer clustering, village affluency, categorization. There are a lot of applications. So store clustering, 
Suppose which all are stores which are giving me more revenue? Walmart. Walmart is having stores. So which all are the stores which are giving me highest revenue? Now if I can identify these are the stores which are giving highest revenue and these are the stores which are giving me lowest revenue. Now let's do the analysis on this cluster. Why this is high and why this is low? So again, it can help what they are missing into these stores and they can identify. Now two types of clustering exist: hierarchical and non-hierarchical. So hierarchical clustering is characterized by a tree-like structure and use distance as a measure of similarity or dissimilarity. We will discuss. Just wait for five minutes. I'll discuss what how it happens. Non-hierarchical clustering techniques use partitioning method and within cluster variance as a measure of measure to form homogeneous groups. Okay. Industry uses non-hierarchical clustering. Okay. Reason I will tell you. Hierarchical clustering is also there. You should know what is hierarchical, but industry mainly use non-hierarchical. I will tell you the reason why. Now, difference between hierarchical and non-hierarchical clustering relatively very slower. Fast and preferable to use with large data sets. Agglomerative clustering is most used algorithm. Hierarchical clustering is also known as agglomerative clustering. I'll tell you why agglomerative. What is agglomerative? Non-hierarchical is known as non-agglomerative clustering technique. Dis using distance as a measure of similarity, it uses within cluster variance. Help suggest optimal number of clusters. In non-hierarchical, you have to define how many clusters. Objects assigned to a cluster remain in that cluster. Objects assigned can be assigned to another cluster. So all these things, when we will discuss the technique, then these differences will be clear to you. Then we will come back to this slide and we will try to understand. Now, this was the till here was the discussion for the clustering. Actually, bigger level, what is clustering problem? So cl what is clustering problem? This you understood. Actually, what is clustering? That was we. That is what we were discussing. Now let's see how clustering has to be done. So first hierarchical clustering. Hierarchical clustering is based on dissimilarity measurement. Most software package calculate a measure of dissimilarity by estimating the distance between the pair of objects. Now what happens if I want to find out which all are the values near, which all are the customers nearby? Internally hierarchical clustering is using the distance algorithm. Okay, what are all those distance algorithm? One is uh, have you heard about this equality and distance? Hmm? Distance, between two distance between two points. How many people have heard of equality and distance? How many people are from science maths background? All, all, physics? All physics you have studied? Yes. Actually, I'm telling you from where this concept came. Coulomb's law, electrostatistics. Electrostatics. Okay, I'm saying everything is statistics nowadays. Or in maths. In electrostatics, you have one uh, concept. First concept is Coulomb's law. The distance between two charges, Q1, Q2, something, something like that. That is called as Euclidean distance based Coulomb's law formula. So that physics formula we are using here for calculating the distance. There are 200 types of distance algorithms are available. Chebyshev distance, Manhattan distance, Euclidean distance, Mahalanobis distance. Mahalanobis was the Indian scientist who has given one distance mechanism. So 200 types of distance mechanism are available. 99% of the times we will be using equality. Okay, it is the simplest one to understand that is that. Okay, three distances I'll explain you. Uh, leave others are not required. So. Measures of similarity, equilibrium distance, city block or Manhattan distance, and Chebyshev distance. So what happens into equilibrium distance? Suppose you have point A and point B in two dimensions. So how many coordinates will be there? X1, X2, Y1, Y2. Correct? Now equilibrium distance will be X2 minus X1 whole square plus Y2 minus Y1 whole square under root. That is the formula for your equilibrium distance. Correct? Now, uh, in this table, for D, I have x1 and y1 coordinates available. For A also, I have x1, y1 coordinates available. I can calculate the distance between these two. Now, what will happen internally in the clustering algorithm? Now, first D will calculate the distance with C, B, E, and A. Wherever it will find out the least distance, that will be the first clubbing. Okay, that is one concept. How equilibrium they are using? 
later things i'll tell you now another calculation how it will happen so wait for that now what happens okay so these two has been clubbed now suppose i have to club uh, one more value okay now now the calculation will not happen from d or a now the calculation will happen from the cluster one cluster has been built now cluster to other observations how much is the distance so i'll tell you this cluster to other observation calculation how it happens just wait for 5 minutes okay so this is one thing suppose now uh, right now we are having only two features brand conscious score and price conscious score suppose you are having one more feature coming salary another feature is coming uh, age suppose these features are coming so dimensions are increasing so when dimensions are increasing still your equilibrium distance can handle them what will happen a1 minus b1 a2 minus b2 a3 minus b3 a4 minus b4 as many number of dimensions you are keep on increasing size of your formula will be keep on increasing so equilibrium can handle multi dimensional data also got it now another type of distance is chebyshev distance definitions you read it i'll just explain you what is chebyshev and what is equilibrium chebyshev is suppose now same way a1 minus b1 a2 minus b2 a3 minus b3 till an minus bn whatever will be the max value in these features that will be the chebyshev distance so max of these whatever there what is happening you are adding and then you are doing under root correct here for each feature you will calculate distance whichever is the max that will become your final distance okay manhattan distance manhattan distance is uh, before that manhattan distance 8 plus 4 so from you have to reach from a to b so from mathematics we know a to b how to reach like hypothesis hypothesis or uh, hypotenuse you can make or something you can do like that so first is manhattan distance 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 8 plus 4, 12. So why they have developed Manhattan distance? I'll tell you. The reason is when you will go into the cities and you want to calculate the distance from point A to point B. If you want to go from the shortest distance, which you will be drawing via the hypotenuse or some place, what will be the problem? There might be some buildings in between. So anyways, that path you cannot follow. You have to follow the streets and you have to go in a certain way. That is why that will be actually your distance. Okay. So Google. Uh, GP uh, Google Maps are using Manhattan distance for calculating the distance. Whenever it is telling you the distance, it is not telling you the shortest distance. It is telling you by considering all U turns or all the uh, streets when taking turns, it is telling you the final kilometers. So they are using Manhattan distance. So that is the application of Manhattan distance wh where we have to use. Now Chebyshev distance is max of eight comma four. So max of eight comma four is eight. Correct. Equilibrium distance will be square root of eight square plus four square. So these are the difference between these three formulas. You have to always use the equilibrium distances. Okay. Now let's see what is hierarchical clustering and agglomerative clustering. So suppose you are having A, B, C, D, E, five records available. So what will happen? Start with each record as a cluster of one record. This is for your understanding only. Actually, it doesn't happen in real time. then telling you how clusters become coming into the picture so first what will happen a and b are the having shortest distance then a and b will be clubbed into step one now ab ab c d and e are pending now ab is one cluster c is one cluster d is one cluster e is one cluster so in hierarchical clustering in first step each and every observation is considered as a cluster so right now we have five observation that means we have five clusters Okay, now which two clusters are the nearest A and B? It has merged A and B into step one. Now in step two, what will happen? A B is one cluster. Now three. Which one is the nearest one? C. Uh, sorry, D and E is the nearest one. So it has clubbed D and E. Now in next step, C D and E. So C is near to A B or D. E. So it is near to D. E, so it has clubbed D E and C. And finally, it is clubbing all of them. so what happens sequentially merges two closest record by distance as a measure of similarity to form a cluster this reduces the number of records by one so what happens sequentially it will be keep on merging the records by calculating the equilibrium distance so what will happen first your a will calculate the equilibrium distance from b then with c then with d when with e wherever it will find out the shortest distance it will merge 
those two. Now tell me one thing. Now A B uh, or leave A B. Suppose D E. Now D E and A B is available. This is one cluster. This is one cluster. Now I have to measure the distance from C. Correct. So for C you have the score available. Price consciousness and brand consciousness. So, okay. For this cluster, how you will take the score? You have two records in this cluster now. A and B. Both are having different scores. Nearby but different scores. How now you will do calculation here? Their uh, average value and yeah, thought process is almost correct. Yes, something something like that we will use or some tricks we will play. We'll see how to do that. That is one thing. For one single record merging, you understood now. Multiple record cluster, how to merge with another record? That we have to see. So repeat the above step with new clusters and all remaining clusters. Still, we have one big cluster available. Now this is called as hierarchical clustering, and this process is step by step what we are doing. This com combining of the clusters is called as agglomeration. Agglomeration. That is why it is called as agglomerative clustering. This is slower in nature. Why it is slower? Suppose now you have ten thousand observations available. Each time it only merges one record. The problem is lot of iteration will happen. Lot of each time it will calculate equality and distance internally, and it will be very slower in those cases. Okay. Now, how this calculation between two clusters happen? When you have five values in one cluster and another cluster, you have five values. So how you will find out these two clusters are near to each other or not? First method is single linkage. In this cluster, the nearest observation, and in another cluster, nearest observation, distance between them. So what I will do? The distance between B and C I will calculate, not between A and C. That is called a single linkage method. Complete linkage is maximum distance. The point which is farthest in one cluster and another cluster that I will consider for measuring the distance. Average linkage. What I will do? I will do the average of the pairs and then finally I will take the uh, distance via that. So average within this cluster, average into another cluster, subtract both these average and value will come. That is one method. Centroid methods. Center point into the cluster. Those I will take for measuring the distances between the values. Ward's method is. Combined cluster with with the increase in within cluster variance is to the smallest degree. So this method we will understand into k-means. Okay. By default, if you will not write any method, we are using this single linkage. By default, clustering uses single linkage, but you can write into the syntax single linkage or multiple linkage or which whichever method you want to use. Okay. Now, this is a kind of uh, okay. Okay, so this is a kind of data set I have available. Okay, in this data set, I have customer ID, names, average monthly spend, number of visits, apparel items, food and vegetable, staple items. So I have this customer data available. I know their average monthly spend into my store. I know how many times they are visiting in a month. I know how much one or zero means if they are buying apparel items or not. If they are buying one, ten, three means. How much frequency is there? They are buying the food and vegetable items, and similarly, the staple items. I have some values available. So now, on this particular data, I want to run. Uh, I want to run the algorithm, <coughs> clustering algorithm. I want to check if uh, some similar pattern I am able to identify. Okay. Okay. So now, this is a tree-like structure which finally it will give you. So when you will run clustering, it will merge two or similar records together, and it will come that it will tell like these are the two clusters. You are seeing this is one section of the tree, this is one another section of the tree. So these are the now two clusters which it has calculated on the basis of distances. Now this particular tree structure is called as dendrogram. Okay, dendrogram is different, decision tree is different. Always remember. How dendrogram is different from decision tree? Can you tell me the differences? So you making cluster first. Hmm. And supervised and non-supervised. No. How dendrogram is different from decision tree? Decision tree works based on factors. Everything that they. Okay. Uh. Okay. Now let's do some brainstorming on this. This is again an interview question. Is classification and clustering same? No. 
why in classification what i was doing in decision tree i was making some segments class 0 class 1 here also i am making some segment class capital class something then why you are saying no decision tree we are we are doing based on target value but here is no target that is why not we see this is an interview question now what is the difference between classification and clustering okay so yes they both are different they are not same one one point is basically uh, classification happens on the basis of target variable one is supervised and is supervised unsupervised but if somebody is asking you the difference between decision tree and dendrogram decision tree is getting created on to the basis of chini gains and the splits okay on the basis of feature splits dendrogram is being created on the basis of similarity measures equality and distances here you are not doing splitting or anything here you are measuring the similarity between the observation by using equality and distance this is the only difference between the dendrogram and the tree okay this is one interview question again classification and clustering so let's think how classification is different from clustering we will discuss it tomorrow you just today you go home read these slides and try to think how it is different one point is okay supervised and unsupervised what else other points you can include into that whatever we have studied till now because this is an interview question they will ask you more inputs one is correct now what else you can put it up into this one is based on similarity measurements another one is based on splitting criteria okay so like this how many more you can come up with so this is the dendrogram shape this is how your dendrogram looks like i'll show you into the code also okay okay now uh, there is one problem with this data set the problem is uh, is standardization of the data set is scaling so till now we have not dis discussed this concept is scaling so i'll tell you the problem why scaling needs to be done here you are seeing here in this data set average monthly spend and all these numbers this column is having high magnitude correct high magnitude is high 10000 what when what will happen 10000 minus 2 10000 minus 1 10000 minus 1 whole square and under root so what will happen this will affect your model now this is again same thing you can also consider it into your regression model you are trying to improve the r square of your regression model in regression model what is the problem in the data set you have square foot area price is number of bathrooms number of bedrooms now your model will assign higher weightage to the column which are having high magnitude of number so square foot area price it will give more weightage w1 w2 but number of bedrooms and number of bathroom it will assign lesser weightage because it understands only number so there also you can try this standardization so when you will do the scaling what is scaling what is standardization scaling is basically making your variable uh, equal to the other variable yes how it happens so we can increase it in the same ratio huh. what how it happens z score z score so what is the formula uh, yes uh, x bar minus mu upon x bar minus mu upon sigma x bar minus mu upon sigma upon under root n okay sigma is also if under root n you will not tell that is for sample and population so scaling so actually what happens that you have readily available scale function and standardization function available you pass your data into that internally it will run the uh, z scores and it will create the uh, scaled data for you which will be on to the i'll i'll show you that table also so see remember all these things see now here your statistics concepts will be keep on relating with machine learning whatever we have studied see there only they were only concepts now here they will make sense how they will those are the helping hands for you to increase the accuracy of your systems okay so now this is one more technique which you can apply into regression let's do the uh, standardization of the data and let's see how much r square value is increasing is it increasing or not so when you will do the standardization you will get this kind of features now this clustering this diagram is different from the previous one without scaling this was the tree you were getting after scaling your tree will change you are getting three clusters okay that is the effect of clustering uh, that, that is the effect of uh, scaling so scaling is required into these kind of things now tell me uh, 
have we done scaling into decision tree and random forest there also we were having the features available with high magnitude correct ages were there their salaries were available their sibil scores itself is a high magnitude number when you will compare with the age so there we have not done any scaling why how is your conversation to one team we are doing more less to be that is done by that is done by and not based on magnitude hmm. the distance we are not calculating the split is happening Uh, so basically there what is happening you are doing the splits for the features on the basis of gini gain calculation uh, on the basis of target variable proportion of target variable but in regression and these kind of problems you are calculating the distances okay these are equation based so i told you whenever there is an equation based model equation based model will be always affected by correlations it will be affected by your uh, scaling problems standardization problem but if you don't have equation based model it will not be affected by with these things so now again your regression is, is equation based model what is the equation that is the equation of line what is the regression equation so if anybody is asking you regression equation it is y is equal to w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus wn xn plus c same thing but you have to uh, spell it in this way. y is equal to mx plus c is the equation of line okay so now this is a equation based model so here your uh, data will be affected now here you are doing again distance calculations it will be affected with your uh, uh, those parameters so scaling is needed here but not needed into decision tree and random forest okay remember these things people can ask you these questions also and always remember this also now when we are telling the standardization we should know what is happening internally in its standardization how it is happening that is course z scores okay so standardization same thing so uh, actually okay so standardization is in python the syntax is standardization and in uh, r it is scaling so that is why so both are same thing some people will ask you questions in this way the people who are more familiar with r they will ask you what is scaling what is scaling of variables some people will ask you what is data set standardization what is standardization process how we do the standardization so both the terms you should remember both are same thing so uh, so this is a kind of a distance matrix so what happens when you will pass the data set into your uh, clustering algorithm in the memory it will create this sort of matrix and in this matrix it will calculate the equilibrium distance the distance of b to a 4.25 distance of c to a 3.41 distance of c to b 3.84 so similarly it will create a uh, matrix of distances and from this matrix it will try to identify which all are the values which are nearby values which are farther values excuse me sir uh, can we apply uh, mst algorithms and this for distance calculation here whatever you can apply if you know okay okay Thank you. yes so there are 200 plus type of algorithms whatever you want to apply you can apply by default equilibrium and uh, always apply equilibrium only because it will be less complicated okay otherwise your results will be different if you will use shabby shave or uh, manhattan okay until and unless it is told to you specifically don't apply these distance algorithms okay uh sir then mm -hmm. there are no uh, uh, cons in this uh, euclidean uh, principle or a theorem because mm -hmm. every algorithm has its own you know good things and bad things okay okay so euclidean is not an algorithm euclidean is just a formula for calculating the distance algorithm is clustering and clustering is having lot of cons and lot of pros okay that we will see so euclidean itself is a mathematical formula a minus b it's not an algorithm Euclidean, you are using internally into your clustering algorithm for finding out the clusters. Okay, so okay again, this is the same diagram. It is again showing you on the basis of distance how it is concatenating the tables, uh, concatenating the observations together. Like C comma D was there, H comma I was there, then H I and F J are having least distance. Clusters are having least distance. It has uh, concatenated these two. So this is how finally you will get a bigger cluster. 
we'll see it into the code also okay so let me go into the code so there now let's try to understand how things happen see now you are seeing see every algorithm is kind of different from other algorithms so that is why in resume you cannot write i only know this algorithm you should say as a whole i know whole machine learning because see tomorrow some data set will come to you if you do you only know decision tree suppose as a as a company has given you one data set where target variable is not available correct and if you will say only i only know decision tree and random forest i don't know other algorithms what will be the problem you cannot solve my problem then you will see that data set and you will say no no this cannot be solvable this cannot be resolved correct so you should know machine learning as a whole it's not about only one or five or six algorithms as a whole conceptual level you should know okay and when you will go within the algorithms there might be requirement of a standardization there might be requirement of correlation there might not be the requirement of correlation these are the calls you have to take zero variance See, nobody is forcing you. If you will directly run your clustering algorithm, still they are giving the clusters. The two cluster it has given. After standardization, it has given three clusters. Correct. So the thing is, nobody will be coming and telling you it is wrong or right. And even algorithm will never say that I am giving error. You are putting wrong. Okay. It's your call. As and how you will try to build the algorithm model, it will come up. But then it might be biased. Now what biasing will happen into this clustering? If you will not do standardization, it will always consider. the disk uh, price always as a main feature for calculating so it is your call so that is why you should know as a whole and then you take from wherever you want to take the bits and pieces and connect them together into a logical manner and build your model correct you are able to see somewhere clustering here sorry model building everything na this is very simple you have decision tree syntax you have random forest syntax here also you don't have to worry about euclidean distance and everything algo will do everything for you the major thing is these tweakings standardization correlation check data size reduction outliers check normal distribution data these are the things which you have to take care see i will build one model you all of all of us will can build one model okay same output it will give where the difference will come how you are tweaking it how how you are handling the data how you have done the ed and analysis that is why the assignments which i am giving you now let do those assignments try to include see it's okay from 68 to 69 if you will also do that is fine but you will understand now yes this these changes happened into the data when i did this that why everything is available on google you can directly take the code it will run on any kind of data do these kind of things and then let's discuss in the class if you are facing any issue if you are getting certain kinds of output let's discuss into the class like how he is asking me like okay can i do this or i am finding outliers into that other people why they are not asking so let's do so now thought process will develop otherwise many people will say, think like okay in decision tree outlier doesn't exist now in clustering outlier exists but with standardization also outlier can still be there because now its value will be somewhat higher can occur can not also <coughs> okay so these are the things so outlier thing also we will discuss here so outlier can we have to do after uh, getting standardized you tell me before standardized before standardized <laughs> before standardization correct not after standardization so before standardization so that's what in a logical manner you have to put this so when you will do correlation check first you 
after standardization or before standardization? Before. Before outlier check or after outlier check? After. Yes. But if we do before, see, we can do anything. But we have this value which is together very small, and then we have values which are very higher. Think, explore, and do. That is where data scientist comes into pictures. That is why you are not a data engineer or data developer. You are a data scientist. Whatever points you are telling me, yes, they can occur. This is why all these techniques are there. Now you come up with your own method also sometimes. Correct? You you decide. Okay, I want to drop only seventy percent values or thirty percent value. You want to feel mean, median, mode. What? How you want to treat null values? So this is how we need to do. See, in any case, you will run with any. See, if you will do first standardization, then correlation check, then stand, then outlier removal, still algorithms will work, but your outputs will not be robust. They will be wrong. Finally, clustering needs just numbers. You feed them the number, it will calculate the distance. It doesn't feed, doesn't uh, care about the standardization or all that. It just wants the distance to be calculated. So, in a logical manner, we have to put up all these things. That is why that capstone project. So in capstone project, I wanted you to do now previously analysis of all these certain kinds, which again only one one person has only sent me. That also I have to check. I think Sandhya has sent me one more person has sent me. You have also sent. I need to check that. I'll check it. So that analysis you start doing into the capstone. Then these things will be clear. See right now I'm telling you, so you are believing it. Now you do it by yourself and see how it is working. Then only clarity will come. This week, take some time and do these analysis on to that data. Forget about machine learning now. Machine learning, you have codes available. Directly use these codes, put your data into that, and run it. And in company also, you have to do same thing. The data collection, data exploration, and data segregation—that is the main part. Cleaning that you learn. Our capstone project is based for random forest. Classification problem, but can can I do their uh, decision tree? Decision tree. See, I I'll tell you what all algorithms are possible in that project. Decision tree, random forest, k nearest neighbor, neighbor based algorithm, neural networks, uh, SVM. Uh, these are the six algorithms possible into that project. As of now. As of now, I agree. But all those six algorithms are possible in that project. So, as we will go further, you will understand. So, KNN we have to see today only. KNN is very easy algorithm if you understand clustering. Okay, okay. So now uh, let me show you the hierarchical clustering. So what is happening? I have this kind of data set available. Uh, so now, now I am assuming I don't have to explain these syntaxes to you. Correct? Not needed. So uh, this is the customer ID, zoner, gender, age, annual income, and spending score. So company has also given the spending score. How much they are spending out of one to hundred? Now you want to find out the similar kind of customers. So I have two hundred customers with five features. Okay. Now, what I am doing here? What is column third? Three, three and four. Three, four. Three and four. We are taking. Okay, I'm. I'm also now confused. It is taking from. Actually, there is a default index. Last two columns. It is taking right now last two columns, but age also we should take. You try it. Right now is age is taking. No, no. By default, there is one index column. Uh, I also forgot now because I have to check that by default column it is taking or not. But okay, right now these three columns it is taking. Now let's run the dendrogram clustering. So in scipy dot cluster dot hierarchy, you have this SHC algorithm available. SHC is hierarchical clustering. Scipy hierarchical clustering. Okay. So now figure size ten comma seven. You can whatever size you want. Title customer dendrogram. SHC dot dendrogram is the syntax. SHC dot linkage data comma method is equal to word. So what I am doing here, SHC dot. So here, what I have done, I have concatenated three syntax in one line. So first is linkage method. What is this SHC linkage? This what you understand from this syntax? 
the mm. word linkage the fourth type uh, linkage method mm. the distance calculation method the word yes clustering distance between within the clusters so what i am doing you can write any one single complete and all whichever you want to write it is doing the last one last one you can try with multiple different different and see how your clusters are changing okay so any method you can take it that is just for cluster different distance calculation okay so now that is linkage method so how you will be calculating distance now over this distance mechanism i want to run my dendrogram i want to create a dendrogram so when you will run this dendrogram it will create a tree for you now this is the dendrogram so there was a root from root it has segregated on now on the basis of distance it is segregating these nearby values so now what it is showing 1 2 3 3 clusters okay it is showing 3 clusters it is considering now sorry ha huh, that is ha huh, this is the problem why we are not using the hierarchical clustering into the industry right now you have 200 customers suppose right now you have 2000 or 2 million customers what will happen your screen will become black in down so many lines will come that this figure will become black your whole screen will become black so that is the reason if you are having a smaller data set we are going with the dendrograms approach otherwise we are not going sometimes we are getting smaller data sets also but generally you will not get less than 10000 will be almost always more than 10000 so that is why people are not using but in interview people are asking how uh, this technique was previously when k means were not developed they were using uh, this technique now after k means somebody has developed new technique k median k prototype clust mix okay i'll explain you what all are these these are just they come recently only Okay, but concept is same clustering concept only. The larger section of audience can come this way. Uh, who is uh, I mean? Huh. If you have you have smaller data set, don't then only use this. Otherwise, use K means. I'll show you K means also now how K means work. But you should know this. So now, mm -hmm. from SQL and cluster import agglomerative clustering. Now this dendrogram, whatever you have cluster. Uh, so from here you have got this figure. Now what I am doing? Agglomerative clustering n underscore cluster is equal to five. Affinity is equal to equality n. Cluster dot fit predict data. So what I am doing here? I am using equality n distance method for calculating the distance between the observations, and I am passing the data for prediction purpose which observation is lying into which cluster. So hmm. previously we were using that kind of data. We are not taking result of that. Anywhere in the uh, okay, so there is one difference. Basically, dendrogram we are creating to identify the number of clusters. Now you have to identify how many number of clusters we should give into the algorithm: two, three, four, or five. So that information you cannot identify by seeing the data. So better is first we are creating a tree on the base of this uh, agglomerative clustering, and then we are defining sub how many clusters you are looking here: one, two, three, color based. But if you will go in more detail, one, two. Three, four, five. So now comes the concept of overfitting and underfitting. Correct. If you will go more down, then you might be actually uh, these. Uh, On the basis of endogram, we are supposed to hide for the values. Yes, in K means also. So now you see, both are having different values, but they are both similar. okay if you will be keep on uh, downsizing downsizing your cluster so what will happen in a cluster only one value is available but these two are both same so that is what you are going into underfitting overfitting problem so that is why somewhere optimal so you you have to decide but better to plot a dendrogram and decide how many clusters you want to take okay is there any ideal number of cluster for putting the data set no in any data set any number of clusters can exist you can you don't know so how do we get to know the overfitting so in uh, uh, clustering 
so there is no concept there is no concept of auc specificity sensitivity accuracy and all because you don't have target available you don't know what is actually the class of this so it is just a pattern identification algorithm it's not a classification algorithm this is the difference between classification and clustering clustering is a pattern identification algo it will just tell you the pattern out of your data now all these clusters which have we we have made are correct or not there is no way to identify that so should we look at this case within this range to this range a particular cluster has to come in this range to this particular cluster Mm, no. I have one more question. Mm. So, if I'm hard coding, say five, mm. can I go from five to six, or I have to count the next number of uh, clusters? Like you one, two, three, four, five. Six. Like you are saying this one, two, three, four. You are saying this. After five, we have ten. Mm. So, can we go from five to six, or directly I have to go? See, five to basically, ten? what we are doing. Suppose five to six, you can go. you can go to 7 8 9 10 uh, as in when you want what we are doing suppose i have created five clusters then after creating those five clusters i am manually going into those clusters and manually i am checking out the observations are they similar or not okay then the cluster will also never tell you that it is an apparel lover cluster this is a fnb cluster or this is this kind of cluster you have to go into that cluster you have to find out which kind of cluster it is and you have to label it brand conscious price conscious that is the problem because it is an unsupervised even i don't know when i started what is happening algorithm just go into that find out the patterns for you algorithm will just tell you sir five clusters are there into your data set so that means there are five types of people available into your data set now that much only i can tell you now after it is your analysis you go internally manually check it from the data set find out so what it is doing when we will run this agglomerative clustering and predict function so for your data it is assigning each cluster a number so first observation is cluster 4 second observation belongs to cluster 3 then again third observation belongs to cluster 4 your assignment is again same you have to generate a csv five csv with five clusters with all customer information so what i want to know i want to know where this customer 1 is lying in which cluster it is lying is lying okay so basically customer 1 is lying into Fourth cluster. I want this into a CSV file. One more column, the so cluster class of the particular customer. Okay, again it is an assignment for you. So now this is just plotting. So you can plot your clusters. So now when you will plot onto a high dimensional data, this kind of data. So this is a double check now. So here you are seeing five colors are coming. Actually, it is visible that there are five clusters. Correct. are there more than five clusters possible in certain way probably what what will happen if you will try to suppose if you will try to segregate into seven clusters what will happen this section will become one cluster or probably this section will become one cluster that is what happens if you will try to more segregate it further then it will go into overfitting then what you are doing actually these are all same they should lie into one cluster but what will happen because you are now drawing 20 clusters this is one cluster this is one cluster this is one cluster this is one cluster which is unnecessary actually all four are same so see these kind of graphs also so that is why scatter plot this is known as scatter plot see into the scatter plot how your data is distributed what do you think how many clusters are possible so clustering is just totally a hit and try algorithm okay so lot of hit and try you have to do so clustering assignment i will release the assignment is all about you have to give me the best engineering colleges in karnataka where i can apply for engineering there are ratings available engineering colleges available you have to tell me which all are the colleges which i can target for study purpose so that assignment i will release so you do that hit and try you find out how many clusters hmm? so after this scaling so this is only hierarchical clustering this much now let's discuss about uh, this uh, k means cluster so uh, what is the result that we provide yes so we will be providing this yes yeah, so i'll tell you you will get this kind of table when you will run these syntaxes you will get this kind of table cluster 1 average monthly spend is 5000 cluster 2 average monthly spend is 2300 cluster 3 average monthly spend is 7800 number of visits uh, leave this apparel 1 
so cluster 3 is apparel lover cluster 1 2 are non apparel okay when you do the aggregation some information will come to you okay but still you have to go manually because this is i have written so i know what is happening internally but still when you will go all, get all these things this is one way by which you can take help and you can find out yes this is apparel lover cluster now now it is saying cluster 3 is an apparel lover you have to go into cluster 3 and you have to randomly take some 5 to 10 values and check if they are actually buying rent, uh, apparels or not okay that is manual that accuracy check is not there because accuracy check happens against target variable there be no actual results here you don't know actually this is just pattern okay so that you have to do manually can it happen that in cluster 3 people might be there who are not apparel lovers why why yes. yes. Yeah. Outliers, but the yeah. clustering can be suppose outliers i removed suppose let like, 0 1 because clustering is according to the distance it might be if you take it as a border you get a border there is like it should it will come to this also this also you will fit it agree <laughs> agree whatever clustering we have studied whatever you understood correct what else 100 feet if you have done 100 feet Yes. Suppose we are doing perfect clustering. Is it possible that in the apparel section, one he told that one person who was onto the boundary of another cluster nearby, it came into this actually. So this one person is not apparel lover, but it, but why it came then in apparel cluster? When why how he came to this nearby boundary? Correct whatever you told. But how he came here when he is not an apparel lover? It, it is not supposed to be coming. Ah, apparel cluster is coming kind of. Okay, he is not apparel lover, but he is spending the same amount as cluster three people are spending. He is from male section, like number of majority of people are male in cluster three. He is also male. Number of visits he is doing five, same as what happening in cluster three. But he never buys the apparel. Possible? Agree? That is why it is nearby onto the boundary, but not into the boundary, and it came into the third cluster. so it can occur but those cases will be very less so actually when we are having target variable available we can check and check the accuracy how much accurate our clusters are but this is an unsupervised so we don't have actual values available we have to rely on to our pattern finding okay now business what you will tell you will tell business these clusters information like okay this cluster i found out this these are the my observation and now these these are the people into this cluster you can take this is an according okay. so let's go to our k means now k mean is the most used non hierarchical clustering method it is not based on distance it is based on within cluster variation in other words squared distance from the distance center of the cluster the algorithm aims at segmenting data such that within cluster variation is Uh, reduced. I'll tell you how it works. Okay. Now it can be only explained via the painting. Okay. So let's do this. Okay. Suppose this is your data. Okay. This is the data set. Now what happens? Step one: assume k centroids or k clusters. So how to assume this k centroid, k clusters? We will discuss. There is a different method here to find out number of clusters. Okay. Suppose we have assumed k is equal to three. Okay. Uh, suppose this is one centroid. suppose this is another centroid and suppose this is another centroid in first iteration when you will assume the centroids they will randomly assigned to each point into the data set randomly they can be anywhere okay three centroids are assigned compute equilibrium distance of each object with these centroids now what will happen each centroid will calculate the equilibrium distance from other points it will calculate from this this This, 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 like this. Similarly, it will calculate. 
Similarly, this will calculate. Okay. Assign the object to cluster with shortest distance. Now, wherever will be the shortest distance, it it will be creating a cluster. Okay. Now, for this point, these many points are short at shorter distance. These many points are shortest distance. These many points are shortest distance. Compute the new centroid of each cluster based on the object assigned to each cluster. The k number of means obtained will become the new centroid for each cluster. Now let's discuss about this concept. <coughs> Suppose this is the centroid. Okay. Sum of square errors. When sum of square errors will be zero? Uh, left hand side, right hand side will cancel out each other. Negative values, positive values will cancel out in variance. Okay. So now what happens within sum of square variance will be calculated after creating the clusters. Now this cluster has been created. Correct. Now with centroid, whatever values are lying into this cluster. It will calculate the within sum of square variance. So suppose it has calculated centroid is calculating within sum of square variance with all the points. Now suppose SSE came something called as 3.14. So what it will do? This centroid will move up or leave this point. Suppose this centroid will move down. When it moved down, SSE increased to 5.12. Okay, what it will do now, it will again go to same position because increasing, it should decrease. So SSE again become 3.14. Now it will move here. SSE become 1 point something something. When it will be exactly into the center, this distance, this distance, this distance, this distance will cancel out each other. SSE will be zero. This is the convergence condition. So now centroid, when your this uh, clusters will be created, one centroid is sitting here, another centroid is sitting here, another centroid is sitting here. This is into the middle. Okay, this centroid is not into the middle. So all these centroids will be keep on moving until and unless they will reach into a convergence position. That convergence position is center position. So now one more. So this till here it is clear. Now one more thing I will tell you. You will never get SSE zero in your clusters. This is for your understanding. Okay. But in real time scenario, you will never get SSE is equal to zero because here this is perfectly distributed and I'm showing you zero. But actually what will happen in real time scenario, you will be having dots like this and somewhere here you will be having data. Suppose one dot is coming here and this is the cluster. So actually what will happen after certain point of time? So lot of iterations will happen internally for SSE calculation. After some time, suppose it reached here. Okay. So SSE is, is equal to suppose 1.1. Now it moves here. So SSE become 1.2. Again, it will move here and it will try to go here. SSE will become again increasing 1.2. So what will happen now? This is the convergence position below this. It cannot reduce the, uh, it cannot reduce the, uh, SSE value. So this value is known as convergence position. Okay. I'll tell you one simple method. So online people will not be able to see this is just Suppose I have to find the centroid of the class. Okay. So what will happen? Uh, suppose first step randomly and somewhere I will be assigned. Okay. So I am assigned somewhere randomly. Now what will happen? I will measure the SSE distance. It is not zero. I will try to move. Some more deduction will happen. Okay. Again I will move. Okay. Reduced. Again I will move. Suppose reducing or increasing. Again I have moved. Increased. So I don't have to go that side. Let's reduce it. I again came back. Reduced. Again I came back. Reduced. 
Then what happened? I came here. Actually, it is not the center of class one outlier is sitting there. Because of you, always SSE will be affected. When I will go this side, this side, zero I will not get. But after some time, I will be moving like this. That's all. This is the convergence position. Okay. That is how your central systems work. Got this concept? Because this will be asked to you into an interview. How K-means algorithm work? And in every interview, they will ask this. Okay. So where is this? Yes. So this is the concept of K-means algorithm. Okay. Now what happens? Suppose again. Uh, so suppose centroid reaches here, centroid reaches here, and this centroid reaches here. <coughs> Repeat step two to four till there is convergence. Now again, what will happen? Again, distance calculation will happen. Now few of the objects from another cluster will be assigned to other clusters, and some new observations will come. It will be keep on happening when one till the time you will be finding the optimal clusters with all the values. This is the procedure. And each time, centroid will be keep on shifting. Okay. And finally, what will happen at certain point of time? It will having its own boundary. It will having its own optimal boundary. It will having its own optimal boundary. Okay. No. One observation cannot be into two clusters. That I will I will show you how to decide. So this is a court question interview question. How you will find out the optimal number of k or optimal number of clusters? Okay. So this is till here it is clear. Uh, k means a superior technique compared to hierarchical technique as it is less impacted by outliers. So I'll tell you why it is less impacted by outliers. Suppose you have one value here, outlier. <laughs> what will happen? <laughs> cluster will be like this. It will be coming into the cluster. So not much. Affected by outliers, but better if you will remove outliers, it will be good. Hmm? But problem, I will tell you, if you are removing outliers, this might be another set of cluster. Actually, they are outliers, but they might be probably another side type of people. People who are going to mall but not buying anything and finally eating golgappa from outside mall. That is another type of people. I am from that class. Okay. So, correct. So, again, see why I am always trying to confuse you. Sometimes I am telling you use outliers, remove outliers. Sometimes I am telling you when you are saying no, we will remove. Then I am telling you no, don't remove. The thing is, take a call on the basis of the data and business. Try to think what can occur, what cannot occur. These are the cases. In a way, remove outliers. No needed, but it can be also the case. You agree or not? Might be these fifty or seventy people are whom I am thinking as an outlier. Might be another type of set. Right? So these things we should consider. You. So how how this will be confirmed? You keep on doing these analysis with this cluster, without this cluster. Show it to business. Are they agreeing on that? If they are not agreeing, remove that cluster. So we don't want these seventy people. If they want them, okay. Fine. So in that way you have to do. So that checking cross verification will always happen with the business, whatever you will do. Hmm? So computationally, it is more faster compared to hierarchical. In hierarchical, in each step only single record will be merged. Here simultaneously three clusters are keep on working within some of square distances, keep on calculating. So it is somewhat faster as compared to hierarchical clustering. So that is one more superiority of k-means, and it is more easier than hierarchical. Preferable to use on interval or ratio scale data as it is used Euclidean distance. Desirable to avoid using on ordinal data. So preferable to use on interval or ratio scale data. Our simple data, whatever is available directly. Try to avoid on ordinal data. So if you have ordinal data, rank data. On that, try to avoid it. If you are having repeated ranks, so actually you can use it onto the ranks also. But if you are having repeated ranks, then avoid it. Suppose if two people are having rank three. Then another rank will start from five. Avoid on those kind of data. If after two you are considering three, even though three people are having rank two, then use this algorithm. Otherwise, you will be missing those values. And again, because distance calculation is happening, 
for algorithm 2 is lesser value as compared to 5 so it will give more weightage to 2 or 5 in the accordingly mathematically so challenge is number of clusters are to be predefined and to be provided as input to the process so how to find the number of optimal clusters so suppose in your data set four hidden clusters are there okay one way is you are defining two clusters so you are missing other two cluster so two cluster if you will give either it will divide in this way or in this way horizontally or vertically similarly if you will define three three uh, uh, three clusters these are the possible combinations any one of the combination will occur so these are the problems so we have to find out the optimal number of clusters so there is something called as elbow curve or scree plot what happened into the elbow curve it is the uh, graph between within group of sum of squares error with respect to number of clusters okay so what will happen internally this algorithm will create cluster and it will calculate the within sum of square errors overall total sum of square error is how much so for first cluster it is 40 then it is 30 then it is 20 then for four it is 20 50 then finally it is going to down so when it is going to zero it is overfitting underfitting overfitting concept we have to take the number of cluster wherever elbow is coming so where elbow is coming three so three is the optimal number of clusters this is an interview question how you will find out the optimal number of clusters for the k means algorithm by checking the wss plot or scree plot or elbow curve both are all three are same thing okay wherever it is making elbow we will take that as a optimal number of clusters agree so now why i am not saying five number of clusters even though the sum of a square is zero overfitting okay 100 percent wrong or 100 percent correct okay now this is again some graphs i have shown for three clusters this is how it looks like into multi-dimensional area so this plot and all and now this is the profiling of the cluster so you can now you have identified these clusters cluster one cluster two cluster three now uh, there are profiling functions available directly run the profiling function it will generate the table for you which i have shown you and you send this results into to the customer now what you have to do in this improvement and all that you cannot do here uh, because against which you what you will be measuring but you have to check for a standardization correlation correlation is affecting this particular case so you have to check correlation also here and send the table and you have to generate the excel sheet for the clusters which person is lying into which cluster okay so here we cannot just correlated no correlated columns are there then you have to remove them this is the final end results but if you are seeing correlation also in the start you have to do the correlation but here we are only having three four variables so i correlation will not be affecting much and all columns are different but again suppose if i will be giving you 100 columns for clustering and you have to go for correlation check you have to go for this missing value check missing value filling zero variance check multiple things the correlation is that the output of this will be same for that two columns yes so it will consider these two columns might be twins or might be uh, affecting other columns that is the problem so so clustering provides you with clusters in the given data set clustering does not provide you rules to classify future records you cannot classify future records like how prediction we were doing that suppose new person came in which cluster it will lie that you cannot do suppose now suppose i went as a new person so you have to assign me into some particular cluster you cannot do that so what you have to do you have to rerun the algorithm again with my observation then i will be assigned to some cluster got it so that is the See, these are the difference between supervised and unsupervised. Okay. So, again, these are some other models. So, see, these are the these all are the things about uh, clustering. Now, I'll tell you what some other people are doing into the industry. So, one of my friends, there was a requirement. Whatever I told you, suppose this new person is coming, I want to predict in whatever class he will go, in which cluster he will go. So, what he did. So here in clustering, you have to rerun. Now client told, I will not keep on running this model because that model was running for one hour for training purpose because we were having 1 million rules. 
He told, I will not run for one hour for predicting one person where he is lying. You do something and give me. I don't know. So we told him clustering it is not possible. It's, it's difficult to do that. He told, I don't know. He told, I don't know machine learning. I don't know stats. Do whatever you want to do. Why you have taken then this project? Otherwise, we pay the money. Told, you just tell me where this customer is lying. So what we have done, I have shown you one table where cluster 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are coming. I have generated one X. Excel sheet. Okay. Now in this Excel sheet, can I say I have target variable available? I have class available, class one, class two, class three, class four, class five. I built a decision tree model on that. Okay. I have told him now you do the predict function. Predict function will tell you the class in which cluster particular person is lying. First it is unsupervised, then you made it supervised. Yeah. You will not get it on any Google or anywhere, but not very big thing I have done. Whatever I knew, I just tweaked that in some particular way. Customer was happy. Okay. So if you know the concepts, if you know the techniques, you can solve a lot of problems. Algorithms are saying, now what I, have to do, what I have to do in the target variable, I have to pass that column and all other features, my Gini game calculations will happen and it will define like what all features are there and what. Can we do that or not? Can do. So, so outliers will impact on decision tree. Remove, remove the decision tree. Remove, uh, outliers will impact decision tree. If, if mm -hmm. we are changing outliers, we are picking some of the values, then we will be changing the group of Yes, yes but see, when you are working with big data, so 5 or 10% misclassification doesn't matter. It is 80. 100%, okay, fine, I am not getting 100%. I am getting 80, 85. But it's fine. No, no, it's outlier are very important thing. Previously, I was not giving weightage to outliers, but I told you that in Great Lakes, one person told me I don't know outliers. From that day, I'm giving weightage to outliers. Yesterday, I have done regression. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, I saw that 62 percent, and suddenly it's going on 73 percent. Your are really changing. Are so see, until and unless you will not do na, see, don't make fun of him. I'll tell you. Until and unless you will not do na, you will not realize the concept why he is behind outliers. He has done something. And he has seen the power of outliers. What can be achieved by removing them. That is why I'm telling you, capstone. Please do that. Capstone and whatever assignments I'm giving you. See, if only these one month you will study now. I'm giving you guarantee you don't have to study for next two years then then definitely we'll go for upgrade and for more salary, more study we have to do. But next two years, I'm guaranteeing you, please do in these one month only. Don't wait for to finish it up. If you want, I can give you leave also. Holiday also, one day off, I can also give you if you don't have time. But do it now only. After that, what will happen? I will be somewhere, you will be somewhere. Okay. So do it now. Uh, okay, this is a good question from him. Now I want you to answer this. How you will handle this such kind of condition? Should I remove them or I should handle them? What should I do? Can you repeat the question, please? Just one. Huh? Which type of uh, you are talking about outliers, correct? Yes. Hmm. Which type of like uh, in general that uh, random forest hmm. that is if we are removing outlier then it will but we we lost some data right? No. Outlier removal. I think you are confusing with correlation and outlier. If we are removing outlier, that means we. Some info you will lose, but out of 1030, 30 values, they are very less. I think 2-3%. We can remove. can remove those. Another thing is, suppose I have 30-40, 30 percent outliers value available. First of all, when you have 30 percent outliers, that is not out. Okay. But suppose, let's think in that way. Suppose 30 percent outlier values or some certain different kind of values available, age section. So what you can do, you can fill these age with some different value, which is in under the 68% normal distribution. So you can calculate mean for the remaining 70%. So mean value is coming, suppose 32. That 32, you fill it up in, in another. So you can convert it. But 
not recommend it then you are just uh, trying to avoid the actual evidence into the data so see when you are doing the outlet basic is remove outliers but when we are trying to treat treat the outliers up to a certain extent it will be biased our model will become biased you are actually you are removing you are uh, removing the evidence on which your model is working correct right. okay. the other feature which is uh, yes. inspect yeah. input information yes. information yes so that all these things you have to figure it out in the model so yes so for regression you are able to increase the r square value up to 73 no no it's not Naturally, mm. drastically change. Okay. Sometimes okay. it's real. Try, try this, this one. Approach. See, what I have seen till now, highest is seventy one in Lund Bay in last two years. R square value from sixty eight to seventy one. That is the highest, and the median is sixty nine. And other are sixty eight. Four always remain sixty eight. Okay. Try this. Okay. And Excel sheets generation. I want you to do that. Okay. For one project, if you will do for decision tree, if you will do for all other, it is same. same. Okay, do that. Okay. So now let's see the code. So now, now K-means clustering. So this is a different data set now. Uh, name, customer ID, average monthly spend, number of visits, apparel, F and B, staple items. Oh, same I have taken. Okay, I'll share the code with different data data set for K-means. So functionality. So data dot describe. You can see. outliers and all those checkings you can do <clears throat> see in every algorithm some different different thing i am putting why i am doing this now you make use of these concepts and you try to build your own algorithm same algorithm so in k means now what improvement over this you can do okay feature scaling so we are having this uh, pre processing library available into sql learn what it will do it will do the scale pre processing dot scale so in pre processing library i am calling scale function what i am doing i am passing my data what is available into my data from 2 to 6 okay last four columns are there so i am scaling these values okay now i have prepared one another data set which is standardized data set now when you will do the print for this standard so uh, print data underscore standardized when you will do you will see the values how it has converted will not be able to make sense but you will see so right now i'm not running that syntax because then i have to load the data set okay you run it at your home and see what is print statement giving you okay now this is the code snippet for wss plot this i have taken directly from the google directly you put your data into this and what it is doing wcss one uh, list i am taking for i in range of 1 to 11 So for one to eleven clusters, okay. Try to find out. So try with one to eleven, increase it. But generally, you don't have to increase. It will be always within ten. And then k means n cluster is equal to i. So in k means algorithm, always it will be keep on find putting different values. Okay. Initialize it with the k means algorithm. Random state again randomly it will be doing keep on sampling from the data set and fit the standardized data into that. Other things are just plotting syntax. You will get the algo curve. Mm -hmm. so where elbow is coming on cl cluster 4 or 5 so try with both them both of them 4 or 5 and see how different results you are getting so what will happen now uh, after that this is the syntax for aggregation k means n cluster is equal to 3 so how many i have taken i have taken 3 so you try with 3 4 and 5 okay and how you can check which one is better suppose you have tried with 4 and 3 4 5, 5 clusters so for 5 clusters what will happen suppose if these values suppose for 3 4 and 5 these values are very similar that means reduce it to four cluster then again check if they are highly different from each other then only uh, consider it as an optimal number of clusters otherwise you can this is one more of tricky check which we can do this is how generally i used to do that okay if they are similar then i am clubbing them again those two clusters So for you also, you can also do it into the similar way. Now you check it with number of clusters four and five also. Okay. So here again, k means dot fit predict data set underscore uh, standardized data set you are passing. Then it will be doing the predictions for you. And uh, finally, we are predict uh, preparing this uh, aggregation syntax group by cluster dot mean. So what I am doing group by by cluster name and dot mean. So for all the columns. 
uh, uh, via the cluster, it will give you the average values. So these are the average values available of average monthly spend into this cluster one, cluster two, cluster three. So for all the columns, it will do these conversions. So thing is, go home, read this clustering algorithm slides, and see the codes. Try to run it. Try to understand the syntax. Ask me if anywhere into the syntax you are not clear. Generate the CSV file for this. So now I am just giving you the profiling of the clusters. But what I want to see, uh, see in this code you don't have profiling available. Do the profiling in another code you don't have this prediction data available. Cluster one, two, three. Do this into that and give me the uh, Excel sheets and see what else uh, exploration, outlier detection you can do it into that code. Okay. So can we do the clustering onto the capstone project? Suppose, uh, suppose if you want to do remove target variable, yeah, then we can. Hmm? Then we can classification. You see, it depends on the problem. Suppose if business doesn't want classification, just want the clustering. That is just pattern identification. Then you can match it with your results of classifications. So the clusters which has been prepared, uh, made, are they matching with the segments which has been made by the classification algorithms or not? Some sort of matching algorithm. You can write some if else condition and do the matching. So this is all about the clustering algorithm. Okay. Nearest neighbor classification. So this is the classification algorithm. Classification means supervised. Okay. So uh, some concepts it has taken from uh, clustering now. So instance based classifier. So what we have store the training resource records use training course to predict the class level of the unseen cases so what are instance based classifiers in instance based classifiers you are having records what we have done those record details you are training your model on and then you are doing the predicting prediction on the basis of that now there are two types of learners rote learners and nearest neighbors so rote learners, what they does memorize entire training data and perform classification only if attributes of record match one of the training example exactly. Okay. Those are called rote learners. They will memorize whole data. And then when you will pass some data, they will do the match. If that match is available, then they will do the classification. Otherwise not. Nearest neighbor is on the other point uses K closest points for performing the classification. So. Let's try to understand the concept. There are two types of classes available class plus and class minus. Okay. I want to predict the class for this unknown point. This is an unknown observation features I have available. Suppose features are height and age. Some feature is available and this plotting is there and uh, we have done the segregation of two classes. Now this is a new point which is belonging into this data set. I want to find out the class for this point. So what happened into nearest neighbor? What is the nearest neighbor? Plus. The class for this will be plus. That is the nearest neighbor concept. Okay. This is called as KNN. So whatever example I showed you now, this is one NN. One nearest neighbor. Two NN. Who are the two nearest neighbors? Three nearest neighbors or four nearest neighbors. So suppose in four nearest neighbor, three are plus and one is minus the class for the point will be plus majority voting. Okay. Now a lot of things we have to discuss into this first thing. What happens into this, how it is identifying that who are the nearest neighbors, how you can calculate that distance. Equilibrium. K means is an algorithm, machine learning algorithm. Equilibrium is a formula. 
so basically this is what we have taken from the clustering equality and distance what i will do i will measure the distance for this point from each and every available point into my data set suppose you want to do three three nearest neighbor search so i will define three nearest uh, neighbors for this point and i will see the class for them whatever will be the class for them same class i will assign for them okay so this is the concept few things now we will discuss so using closest points nearest neighbors for performing classification nearest neighbor is this much only that's all okay this is a class supervised learning because other three you know the classes okay for this one you can now predict let's discuss how it works so basic idea is if it walks like a duck quacks like a duck then it is probably a duck okay so this is a graph so basically nearest neighbor requires three things the set of stored records distance matrix to compute distance between the records the value of k the number of nearest neighbor to retrieve okay problem i'll tell you in k nearest neighbor okay what is the problem so now this is the point i want to classify this is an unknown record so three nearest neighbor are plus so what i will do i'll assign the classes plus okay to classify an unknown record compute distance to other training records identify k nearest neighbors use class labels of nearest neighbor to determine the class label of unknown record now here also same thing optimal number of k so how many k you have to take we'll discuss that also so this is one nearest neighbor class is minus when i'm going to two nearest neighbor now it will confuse it should be minus or plus then it will randomly assign any value and here when i am increasing 3 uh, then again k nearest neighbors of a record x are data points that have the k smallest distance to x the smallest distance it will calculate with the neighbors and those neighbors it will consider for the prediction purpose now this is the voronoi diagram so this is how your data looks like into multi dimensional scales so one dimen when you have two dimensions is it two dimensional x and y axis three dimensional x and y and z more than three dimension it will be key, it will be looking like this it is a voronoi diagram internally it looks like this okay just for your showing purpose i have included this so nearest neighbor classification compute the distance between two points equilibrium distance okay so equilibrium distance i am not explore explaining must much but again one more question i want to ask suppose distance we are calculating suppose i want to calculate the similarity so how i can calculate similarity similarity so right now i am calculating the distance between two points now i want to calculate the similar what is so on the basis of distance only i want to find out how much two uh, points are similar so how i can calculate that You no know, correlation is uh, different thing. So according to distance, the smaller the distance is more. Ah, correct. It's more is the similar. So what you can do with this equality and distance to find out the similarity? Yes. I can do one upon d. S is equal to one upon d. S is equal to one upon d means S is proportional inversely proportional to distance. When distance is less, similarity will be high. when distance is high similarity will be less so directly equilibrium formula if you will do 1 upon d it will work as a similarity measurement so in clustering slide we were reading that sim and dissimilarity similarity bracket this so actually it is nothing but if you want to tweak it instead of now distance you want to calculate similarity you can calculate both are same things in a way but tweaking happens in this way so i'm not discussing much about this so now choosing the value of k optimal value of k if k is too small sensitive to noise points suppose if k is too small and suppose i have this kind of data k so if k is only 1 actually it should belong to class plus because all other are plus but this is a noise noise came into your data from somewhere so what will happen if you will take one k value as too small it will classify wrong might be you have noise data uh, into your data set now if k is too large neighborhood may include points from other classes 
again problem if you will include k more so now actually this belongs to class plus but now what will happen voting happen voting will say class minus so k should be an optimal number we have to find out the optimal number of k how we can find out optimal number of k here do you know any some technique which can give us k optimal values like tree graph tree graph elbow curve won't work here elbow is for clustering k means okay gini gain is for decision tree okay remember this thing now gini gain will never come into any other algorithm okay so uh, do, have you heard of some sometime this term uh, grid search cd yes. we can use that grid search cd you know what is grid search cd how it works so we will see how it works in the codes put grid search cd it will find out the optimal k value for you but can we do it into the clustering also grid search cd but clustering can i apply grid search cd what is the concept of grid search cd how it, it it finds out the optimal number of parameters means optimal values of the parameters how it find out so it is basically trial and error okay what is showing different parameters okay taking optimal solution what is that optimal solution in clustering also i can do in the same way right? it will be keep on huh yes the best one you cannot use it because i Uh, correct ans correct answer is because you don't have the measuring parameter in clustering in other algorithms what happens you know the target variable correct your model will change the parameters and it will measure against the target variable what i have predicted and what is actual wherever it will get the highest accuracy it will say this is your optimal parameter but in clustering there is no concept of accuracy you don't have target variable so grid search cd we cannot use into the clustering but in k nearest neighbor you can use correct so we will see, see how we can use it so k nearest neighbor is again having scaling issues because again you are calculating distance you have to do the scaling okay so high dimensional data this we will see these are so also can we say that wherever we are using you can get distance there will be all scaling right equally in distance no wherever you are using k means you can use equilibrium distance but wherever you are using equilibrium distance doesn't matter you are using k means of knn you can use k means of knn also wherever we are using equilibrium distance there we need to improve the concept of scaling right because that in regression are we using equilibrium distance but you have to include this concept of standardization so wherever we are using equation based models wherever there is some calculation associated with respect to the features on the features now in decision tree you tell me are you doing any calculation on to the feature value itself no so there you have 10000 200 to doesn't matter it is just checking zero or one into target column correct so standardization if you will do or you will not do doesn't matter suppose you have done the standardization into your data on ages column or somewhere how does it matter in decision tree anyways it will be checking the target column zero one and it will calculate gini gain it doesn't it doesn't give any weightage to your features correct but in regression what happens your features are considered y is equal to w1 x1 plus w2 x2 now this y will be calculated onto the basis of these numbers which are available into x1 x2 x3 so it will be affected distance calculation when you are doing you are directly doing the distance calculation within the features Correct. X two minus X one, Y two minus Y one, Z two minus Z one. Then standard deviation has to be done. Okay. Now K nearest neighbor classifiers are lazy learners. It does not build model explicitly. I'll explain this part also. Lazy learners. Why it are lazy learners? okay what is the value for plus 1 and 2 
okay now what happens model training happened at the time of model training it has created this scatter plot okay now at the time of prediction new observation came and i want to predict now what will happen suppose this is my new observation which i want to predict into this data set so now for this observation i have x value available and i have y value available correct correct and you want to do the prediction so now what happens this point has to be fitted into this space so what happen your model will rerun clustering what happens if new observation will come you have to rerun the clustering for finding out in which cluster it will go here also similarly when you want to find out this observation where it will go into your space it will rerun and it will assign okay this is lying here okay and then it will check for nearest neighbor so for each observation it has to keep on running again and again whole data set correct that is why it is called as lazy learning because each time you will be running the whole algorithm whole data set okay this is the reason why it is not mostly used algorithm now there are lot of classification algos are there this is also a classification algo this is the problem with this algo but there is one benefit with this algo which we will discuss when we will start studying svm remind me knn benefits because svm and knn are having similar benefits in terms of productionization so i'll tell you those things so right now it is not needed but that time i'll explain you where it is getting uh, more robust okay okay so this is the concept that is why it is called as lazy learner so all other things you read it into the slides not that important let's see the data set and code so this is now the unique our classical data set of iris iris data set so iris data set has been prepared by ronald j fisher in 1960s who was a statistician lot of algos which we are reading today are given by him so what he has done he has collected few species of flower uh setosa versosa versicola biological name and what he has done he has thought of can so these are the three uh, species of the flowers can i segregate these flowers on the basis of their petal length and petal width so what he has done he has measured the petal width and petal length for each and every flower and he has noted it down and he has seen is there any case like all the petal widths and lengths are same for same class and different for other classes so he has prepared this data set it is one of the best classical data set and every data scientist should know this uh, iris data set whenever you are studying so uh, let's see so this is the data set in which you have four columns sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width sepal and petal are the your flower related some terminologies okay so now he wants to classify are these values classify my data into setosa or versosa or versicolor okay these three uh, things now what i am doing i am doing the test and split so x is equal to what is happening here in x and y we are just taking the target value from minus 1 and taking only the reverse target but minus 1 should remove the first value yes. correct it should remove the first value Last, 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 last. First or last? Last, last. Correct. It should remove last value. Whenever you are talking with minus two is to minus three, counting starts from the right. last right side. Okay. This is again an interview question. In Accenture, they asked me. I give wrong answer. Miss, not this. I am not that idiot. But what they asked me, they have given me Accenture is written. Now give me the alphabets from minus two is to minus three. Okay. So there I. actually it will print two characters i printed three on paper they were asking me so remember this yaar something insulting hota hai na when you are telling lot of big things and suddenly you are not able to tell this small thing correct so that is what so remember similarly uh, one more interview question they are asking uh, the index is starting in python index starts from zero in r it starts from one and i remember these things so the whatever i am keep on remembering i am telling you whatever i have seen so this is the thing then here four other values you are taking x and y you have segregated 
now train and split test and train split same thing 80 is to 20 standardization i'm not explaining much you read it at your home codes they are simple now now you have to just follow the procedure after concept now this is our k nearest neighbor classifier so classifier is equal to k nearest neighbor n neighbors is equal to 5 and dot fit x train and y train we are fitting our data set for training and then predict function you can use directly x underscore text and it will do the predictions for you and then confusion metrics so for three classes classes 0 predicted as 0 13 classes 1 predicted as 1 7 times classes 3 and predicted as 3 9 times only one misclassification happened okay very high accuracy 95 96 percent accuracy okay so this is the report again if you want to generate this is the basic fundamental algorithm now optimal value for k neighbors okay so what happens here we are having this uh, graph also available grid search series final method this is the manual method now okay so in this k value and mean error what is mean error so when classification happened so what happened here when i have taken nearest neighbor as 5 how many misclassification happens one so error rate is something 4% or 5% correct now with different different number of uh, features number of k values we will see how much error is coming wherever error is less that is your optimal number okay so what i have done here for i in range of 1 to 40 so for 1 to 40 neighbors run k nearest neighbor classifier pass i value and fit the data x train y train and predict the data and then check how much error is coming okay then this is the figure I have plotted from this error calculation. These syntaxes are the same syntaxes I have copied from the upper side, whatever model we have built. So what is happening? Uh, for one nearest neighbor, error is 0 0.03. Then what happened for when we have increased nearest neighbor, error increased. Then it was con constant. Then for six or seven number, again, it decreased. Okay. So similarly, this graph is coming. So this is one way. To identify the optimal number of k value okay so another is grid search cv so grid search cv i want you to try on to k nearest neighbor if you want to don't want to use k nearest neighbors you can directly use from here this particular graph and what tell me uh, what value you will take now for k nearest neighbor six seven, six, seven something whatever is coming here why you you are not considering this uh, Okay, only one value is there. Fine, six or seven only you have to take. So this is the graph which will be helpful for you to find out the optimal number of clusters. So if you will look at it, it is similar to like grid search CV, whatever we are doing there. Uh, you are passing a range of values for K because in K nearest neighbor, we don't have many parameters. Only K parameter you have to check it. You can directly run it here without grid search CV also because it will take same time only, whatever grid search CV is using. But grid search can also work here. So this is about the k nearest neighbor algorithm. It's a simple algorithm. Nothing much is there. It is just based on the equality and distance. It will find out the nearest neighbor. It will do the voting and it will assign the class. Same assignment here also. Try to implement grid search CV in this and tell me uh, the Excel sheet for the uh, customers or for the species which you found out. That's Satosa. So you generate three Excel sheets, one for Satosa, one for Versicolor, another one for your another species and assign it. Okay, that code is left you right. So this is all about your K nearest neighbor. So K nearest neighbor is simple if you know the K means. Now this is an interview question. What is the difference between K means and K and hmm. So what else? Clustering without target. Uh, you can you can uh, you can say it. one is supervised, another one is unsupervised. Hmm? What else? Yeah, uh, we calculate centroid. Okay. Uh, here we don't calculate centroid. What else? There you have to find out the optimal number of clusters. Here you have to identify the optimal number of neighbors. What are the similarities? 
Clustering and classification are different things. It is not a similarity. So both are using Euclidean distance. So similarity. So both are using the distance metric as a Euclidean distance. Both are based on the similarity measurements. Clustering is also made by, based on similarity measurements. Your nearest neighbor is also based on similarity measurements. Uh, what other you can thought of? Both are lazy learners. I can say this. Both are lazy learners. Pressure he is putting. Now we will discuss this. Uh, SVMs and uh, logistic regression. Hmm? Okay. That's all for today's class.